after my first video on the Tyranids vs. the Flood did absolutely amazing, with way more interaction than any video previously on my channel, even surpassing the Advex Moors video, which I thought would be my best video for a while, the support on the part 1 was absolutely incredible, and for that I'm going to be making a part 2. Um, this is going to feature a lot of different scenarios, and they require quite a bit of stretching to make any of these work, but I mean, if you're watching a video about two sci-fi factions split across space, time, and copyright, I really don't think you came here expecting everything to be by the book. So before I dive into the first scenario, um, I'm going to be breaking up the first and the second scenario into different sub-scenarios. Um, I'm not going to be doing it with the third scenario, but for the first two I feel like it was a little too vague not to give you more detail. So for scenario 1A and 1B, the Tyranids manage to send themselves into the Halo universe. For the sake of the scenario, let's say they consume someone who worked on a teleportarum array, and the Tyranids not understanding that the people who work on Imperium technology have no idea how it worked, they use that information and sent themselves into the Halo universe. For continuity's sake, a dozen or so bioforms pop up on a random world in Halo space, and we're going to say that all of this happens in around 1800s AD, so right before the Covenant really, really gets going. Scenario 1A brings us to the Tyranids landing on the San Shayun, or the Prophet's homeworld. The Prophet's being a very long-lived species would be a vast repository of both biomass and information, as well as some genetic modification tools. Remember that for this scenario, we just have a dozen or so bugs cut off from the central hive mind, and they essentially have to rebuild or form their own hive mind. Also, for the simplicity of this scenario, they are not connected to the hive mind. I probably should have mentioned that earlier, but ADHD really does not help with script writing. But since these two universes would be separated by either an infinite amount of time, an infinite amount of space, or it's in another dimension or reality entirely, we can't assume that they would have any connection to their central consciousness. Now, don't be mistaken, those dozen or so bioforms are still incredibly dangerous, being apex predators in their own right and capable of struggling off most small arms fire and cleaving through even the most sophisticated of armors as though it was warm butter to a hot blade. The San Shayun, or the Prophets, being the main intelligence of the Forerunners outside of the Hormagants or the Engineers, depending on what you want to call them, would actually set the Tyranids up with a really, really good base in the forms of technology and biomass. This does not mean that it's an easy fight by any meaning, as the San Shayun would essentially be fighting rabid animals in the beginning stages until they eventually got to a point where some leader unit or synapse unit could be created to act as a processor. The early losses of the Tyranids in this scenario Area would be incredibly steep, and I can see up to as many as 75% of the original dozen or so bugs being completely wiped out and the prophets believing themselves having passed some divine test. But the nids being the nids, some would burrow, some would swim, and soon enough the oceans would start to empty itself of both flora and fauna, while at the same time all of the soil would wither and die as all of the nutrients and minerals vanished within a season. Eventually, if they can reach a point where a proto-hive mind is created, the ball actually starts to get moving really, really fast. Slowly, the vast swaths of the galaxy are being cast into eternal darkness, and all of this is completely unnoticed by the wider galaxy, as since the Halo Ray has been fired within the last 100,000 years, all of the current life within the Halo Galaxy needed time to grow or recuperate from what minuscule populations the Forerunners had preserved on the Arcs and the Halos themselves. I do believe that if the Nids landed on the San Shayun homeworld that humanity would have enough time to rise, discover the Flood, the Precursors, and the Forerunners all in C2, but I believe instead of humanity humanity losing planets to the Coveys, it would be the Tyranids. A lot of the early Halo lore plays out the exact same with the Insurrection, but this time there are rumors of a swarm of bugs that consume any ship foolish enough to stray outside of well-defended trade routes. I personally believe that the Tyranids would get to the humans just before the Spartan 2 project really began, but the UNSC isn't the Imperium. The gene stealer cults that regularly affect the Imperium would not be nearly as effective as they are in 40k, since AIs and humanity have been working together and have advanced the majority of the setting into an almost post-scarcity state. Very quickly, someone's boss would tell the purple man with the literal throbbing cranium to go to the doctors, or at the very least, just do a quick scan. Also, 
If the Tyranids manage to get to installation 04 and consume what flood remnants are there, it's GG. The flood would just consume the Tyranids. I know that's going to piss off a lot of people, but this is a relatively new species of Tyranid, quote unquote. They don't have the all encompassing intelligence that we have in 40k. This is a proto hive mind at best, and the infinite wisdom and knowledge held within a single spore of the flood means the intelligence of the Tyranids in this instance would be nothing. Decisive flood victory. So 1A is over, moving on to 1B, with the Tyranids landing on the planet of Balaho, which is the home planet of the Grunts, or the Ungoy. Seeing as the Grunts would have significantly more to offer in the means of biomass, the consuming of the Grunt homeworld would essentially hand the Nids a lot of very early victories, with the average Grunt not living terribly long, and they reproduce on a scale comparable to rabbits. The Tyranids, within a span of a decade, can turn the planet of Balaho into a second planet of Zeophoria. If the bugs were able to turn the planet of Balaho into a foothold like they have in the Tiamat system in 40k, it would be a lot more rapid of a buildup of biomass and allow for more complex creatures to evolve quicker. This does however mean that the initial engagements between the Tyranids and the other races in Halo would be significantly more costly. The advantage this time is the initial starting bonus. Think of it like a game of Stellaris. The Tyranids spawn right next to a planet with a species of super rapidly breeding dumb workers. Nids starting with an extra 30 or so pops would be an incredible buff, as opposed to the profits who would be starting with an initial technological buff. Speaking of technology, the Tyranids in this instance would be starting with essentially zero technology. Compared to the profit starts, the grunt start would mean that the grunts are most likely going to fill a role like the Zotes in old Tyranid lore. Instead of this time, they're not a warrior race, they are farmed like modern chickens, stuffed with chemicals and bioengineered to grow as many and as fast as possible. By the time any other spacefaring race had actually made it to the Tala system, which I don't believe I mentioned earlier is the grunt home system, I can imagine a fairly advanced hive mind and a hive fleet comparable to that of Tiamat in a similar defensive posture. Once a tier 2 or 3 civilization did finally come into the Zala system, it would be easily overrun and the Tyranids would then incorporate all of that information within. This brings up AI since almost every single race in Halo loves AI and we very rarely get to see them interact in 40k, that's probably the best place to end this one. With the Tyranids encountering a true AI, a great story involving a debate with the proto hive mind and whatever AI it comes into contact with would ensue. Do the Tyranids develop a analog of the logic plague? Do they fail and AI rise up against the organics once again? This one doesn't even really involve the flood since the Nids wouldn't be able to get to them before humanity or another race had discovered Installation 04. Tyranids, or the Covenant, or whatever analog exists here, win this half of the scenario. Scenario 2 is going to be broken up into three sub-segments, and it's going to be a similar situation to the first scenarios, but it's the opposite direction. A dozen or so flood popcorn bioforms find themselves in a slip space disruption, they jump right out into a black hole, this forces them to jump back into slip space, and the conflict of both the lack of infinity and the infinity of the black hole's mass and information forces the Flood into the Games Workshop Warhammer universe. Scenario 2, as I said, will be broken down into three sub-scenarios since these have nearly as much substance as the previous two scenarios. Scenario 2A, the Flood shows up during the Great Crusade and just for gits and shiggles, let's say it's the Iron Hands Legion led by Ferris Manus who encounter the Flood forms on, I don't know, Random Planet 47. Really, any legion outside of the Thousand Sons and the Dark Angels would be the exact same situation. Gilliman, only under the best of circumstances, could counter the Flood, and he's got a lot going against him here. With Magnus, he would try to talk to the Flood, and being the ignorant bastard he is, would certainly try to control it, and the Flood, being omniscient, would allow Old One-Eye to let his hubris be his downfall again. Even in this scenario, Magnus does everything wrong. With the Lion, there's a 50-50 chance he just glasses whatever planet, or he unleashes the Men of Iron, which damns the entire galaxy in that case, but giving him the benefit of the doubt, let's say he catches it early, he would call on Daddy Emperor when the situation calls for it, and the entire war effort would shift here. Assuming that this doesn't happen during the Pale Wasting, the Ulanor campaign, or the Rangdan Xenocides, the Imperial War effort completely shifts here, and the Flood is successfully dealt with. This is technically a 40k victory, even though it doesn't even involve the Tyranids. Scenario 2b. The Flood shows up during the Great Crusade, but this time it's at the height of the second Rangdan Xenocide. 
Same as before, dozen popcorn boys are sent to random planet 47, except this time the Flood is able to completely devour entire swaths of the galaxy by the time the Imperium even notices. They will have reached near precursor levels and will be using neural physics. Physically constructing the galaxy into an ever-closing maw of singularity. Again, this one is very boring, but it's a decisive victory. By the time the Tyranids arrive in M40, or even more generous, M35, the Flood would control the entirety of the galaxy, and would have expanded to their old domains of the large and small Magellanic Clouds, and maybe even Pathcathona. This also brings up an early encounter between the Consciousness in the Magellanic Clouds, or Pathcathona, and the Tyranid hive mind. but I'm not going to be going too much into it, this scenario doesn't have a lot of depth. Scenario 2C, the Flood show up during M40 on the western side of the galaxy. As Leviathan is ravaging the east of the Imperium, the dozen or so popcorn bioforms, as before, show up on random planet 46 this time. They take over the black powder level agri world and its meager planetary defense force. By the time the gears of bureaucracy within the Imperium turn enough to actually send an Imperial Navy or Guard expedition, a grave mind would have formed, and the expertise of the Admiralty as well as the upper brass of the Guard would allow for a thorough understanding of this perverse imitation of the humanity that this universe contained. A key mind is formed on random planet 46, and all of the archaeotech within the western half of the galaxy come alive and the wrath of ancient creator gods is wrought against the Tyranid hive mind. This is the closest to a 1v1 we can get between the two extragalactic intelligences. A fourth and a fifth dimensional being fighting. I call the Tyranids fourth dimensional beings since they still seem to exist within time. That does not mean that they are still victims of it in the same way we are, and I can almost certainly see the Tyranids viewing time like the precursor of the Flood do, but not being able to move within it. In other words, the Tyranids are swimming in time, surrounded by it at all times, and they could perceive all times. The Flood, being fifth dimensional beings, would essentially be the owners of that aquarium or the fish tank that the Tyranids are swimming within, being able to maneuver through time and influence it in both directions. They also create matter from thought, which the Tyranids haven't been shown to do. I'm not saying they can't, I'm just saying we haven't seen it. To round off all of Scenario 2, Flood win in every situation except the best case scenario. So, Scenario 3 is completely 40k fan service. I know I'm going to have a lot of Halo Copium comments if I don't give the Tyranids a victory, but I I really don't see that happening without narrative and imaginative leaps. When trying to compare the Flood and the Tyranids, it's important to view them from an out-of-universe perspective. The Flood are the setting in Halo. In 40k, the Tyranids are just a faction. To elaborate a little more, the history of Halo and the Precursors, or the Flood, are ubiquitous. And by that, I mean the Precursors shape so much of the setting that to remove them is to remove what makes Halo, Halo. You remove the literal need for the Halos. The Tyranids, in their current settings, are just bugs that cause problems. Yeah, they're a big problem, but they don't define the setting. The Flood also eat consciousness, not biomass. I know in 40k things eating things is common, but for the Flood, any consciousness helps them grow. The Tyranids turn biomass into consciousness, but conversely, the Flood views biomass as a consequence of harvesting brain juice. So, to give the Nids a fighting chance, the same dozen or so popcorn boys arrive on one of the planets within the Tiamat system in M42. High Fleet Tiamat immediately sends Scion and White Tendrils to immediately find and consume these trespassers. Almost as soon as the Flood arrive in the Tiamat system, the Flood bioforms understand how absolutely fucked they are, as they currently stand. They co less into a proto grave mind and attempt to converse with the tyranid hive mind initially the tyranid hive mind doesn't give the flood any notice but after enough consciousness has been harvested to form an actual grave mind the tyranid hive mind is forced to deal with such an indomitable will as quickly as the ambush was sprung every bioform within system and approaching to assist all immediately froze as if time itself had been removed and our four-dimensional universe collapsed into three dimensions, as the two godlike intelligence conversed in all forms of thought, games of conquest, presentation of arguments through time and space, showing how each mind can influence cosmic events. The Tyranid hive mind, seeing the potential and consuming this near omniscient being, began a ruthless assault on the grave mind. This brings to light something we only really see with Magnus the Red and the other Primarchs, hubris. As the Tyranid hive mind does finally consume the grave mind, every Tyranid within the 
the galaxy lets out a shriek as the sheer quantity of infinite information while at the same time the sheer emptiness of infinite time began to fry every neuron within every nearby synapse creature. Only the directed focus of the entirety of the Tyranid organism could truly grasp everything contained within the flood. But by doing so, the hubris of the hive mind is revealed. As the Tyranid hive mind is a god to a mortal, the flood is a god to the Tyranids. Painfully, Every bioform within the universe lets out a shriek of agony, and slowly they melt into jelly. As soon as the hive mind reaches what it thought was true infinity, reality broke, and the sheer quantity of information held within the Tyranid hive mind collapsed in on itself. Despite having the knowledge of how neural physics work, and how an infinite amount of everything and nothing works, the Tyranid hive mind just couldn't wield it like the precursors or the flood do, and the black hole brought about by the attempted subsuming of two gods easily destroys 80 and 90% of all life within the Milky Way. Exceedingly strong bursts of radiation tear across known space as a catastrophe nearly as deadly as the firing at the halos lays waste to the galaxy of the 42nd millennium. In the end, the Tyranids win by technicality since they would inevitably survive, the bugs would 100% survive as some rabid animals let loose into neighboring galaxies, and maybe this could also tear a reality into the warp. This essentially sets a Tyranids back anywhere between 60 and 95%, depending on how bad it actually is. And that wraps it up. Uh, the next video is going to be either replacing Cadia or how the Flood encompasses all of Chaos. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.